Blockchain technology holds the potential to revolutionize countless industries. But if it's going to do this, it has to solve one major problem, and that's scalability. After all, one of the biggest complaints about blockchains like Ethereum is that it's too slow and it's too expensive to use for mass adoption. In the last bull market, we saw lots of alternative layer one blockchains come onto the scene, like Solana, Avalanche, and Binance Smart Chain, claiming to be better than Ethereum or so-called Ethereum killers. Just last year, in the middle of the bear market, we saw new players enter into the ring like App and Sui. And in today's video, I want to talk about yet another alternative layer one that's coming onto the scene that does something different from all of its competitors and why you should pay attention to this. I never talked about this in my channel before and not a lot of people out there online are even talking about this yet. And I expect this to get a lot of attention in the coming months as this goes live because people are always looking for the next hot thing, especially as we gear up for the next crypto expansion so they can get up on new technologies and cryptos before they blow up. So I'm going to tell you exactly what this new project is and my unbiased review as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you to a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna learn how to become a blockchain master, step-by-step start step to finish, get ahead of the next crypto wave, I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about this new alternative layer one blockchain that's coming out of the scene that does something unique from all of its competitors. So what is it? Well, it's called Monad. So what does it do and why do I expect this to get traction? Well, first of all, let's look at the scalability side of things. So Monad claims to process a whopping 10,000 transactions per second with one second block times. So that's a massive improvement from a blockchain like Ethereum, for example, which processes about 15 transactions per second and about a 12 second block time. Basically, that's the amount of time it takes for your transaction to actually get included onto the network. And you have to understand that's one of the biggest bottlenecks of scaling is basically how many transactions can you do at one time and then how long does it take for an individual transaction to get included on chain? So how does it achieve this type of speed and scalability? So one of the biggest things behind the scene is actually taking advantage of parallel execution. So how does that work? Well, blockchains like Ethereum, for example, really only process one transaction at a time. So if I'm gonna send cryptocurrency from my wallet to yours, let's just say one Ether, for example, whenever I send that, I'm the only transaction that the blockchain is processing at that time. Everybody who's ahead of me, they have to get included before my transaction goes in, and everybody behind me has to wait for mine to go through before the next one can go through. And so you can see how this can present a pretty big bottleneck for scaling. But with parallel execution, what it does instead is it can accept multiple transactions all at the same time and basically handle each of those individual transactions atomically, concurrently, without having to wait for you know other ones to go through while a different ones process. And you can imagine if you you know do this multiple times over, then you can obviously multiply the number of transactions that you can handle per second to get to Monad's advertised 10,000 transactions per second. Now, at the beginning of this video, I said that Monad does something different than its alternative layer one competitors, okay? And parallel execution is not a new thing in blockchain, okay? Solana has a strategy for this and the other, uh, you know, layer ones that I talked about before that came on scene last year, like Aptos and Sui also have strategies for doing parallel execution. So it's not a new thing. So what does Monad do differently that makes it competitive from these other alternative layer ones? Well, let's take a look. So the other chains that I mentioned, like Solana and Aptos and Sui, they take a pretty big departure from Ethereum in pretty much every way, all right? They have different consensus mechanisms. They do this parallel execution thing, but they also basically use their own proprietary programming languages and execution environments for the blockchain. So Ethereum uses the Ethereum Virtual Machine or EVM, okay? And they use the uh, Solidity programming language. And these other blockchains like Solana, for example, uses its own runtime and also uses Rust as the programming language for writing smart contracts. Similarly, Aptos and Sui have their own runtimes and they use the Move programming language. But what's different about Monad is it's actually EVM compatible. So what does that mean? Well, basically that means that any program that you can run on Ethereum, you can port over to Monad with basically no changes. So why is this such a big deal? Well, Ethereum, and more importantly, the EVM, which is the technology behind Ethereum, which is used on multiple chains, has the largest market share of TVL and users, okay? You can see that on a website like DeFiLlama.com. Ethereum is the vast majority of market share. And then when you add in other blockchains that are also EVM compatible, like Tron, Binance Smart Chain, all these Ethereum Layer 2s, 
it's a vast majority of the pie. And anything that's not EVM compatible is a tiny minority, which makes it much harder to compete and actually get users into the ecosystem. But if you make it EVM compatible, it's so much easier. Blockchains rely upon what's called a network effect, okay? So basically, Think about like a social network, for example. You wouldn't want to get on Facebook.com or X.com like Twitter if there was no one else posting on there and that you couldn't friend or follow. It would basically be useless. The only thing that gives those social networks value are the users on the platform. It's the same with blockchains. You don't want to get on a blockchain where there's no people for you to transact with, no applications like DEXs or any other blockchain app that you can use. And one of the biggest bottlenecks to getting those applications out there is having developers and having applications that you can easily put on the blockchain. So a lot of these other players like Solana and Aptos and Sui that have used, you know, different programming language than what standards in the blockchain community have a big hurdle to overcome, which is number one, the developers have to learn those programming languages. That's not Solidity. Solidity is the widest language used by far. So you can't tap into really existing blockchain developers very easily. They have to learn something new. And then also on top of that, you can't just fork existing Solidity based projects and put them on these blockchains to colonize the ecosystem very easily. But if you make it EVM compatible, you can bootstrap the ecosystem really fast. You can add DEXs, you can add lending markers, you can add all the features that you want to make a blockchain useful really quickly. And you can tap into all the existing blockchain developers to write new apps really fast. And not to mention with these new ecosystems, there's going to be big incentives for developers who already have these skills to do that, to go colonize this ecosystem and to be the first person to set up this app or that app, especially if it's an alternative layer one that they think could scale significantly with these parallel execution that I'm talking about. All right, so that's an overview of how Monad's doing something different from other blockchains. It's kind of taking ideas from everybody but fusing them together in a way that almost nobody else is really doing with fast transactions through parallel processing, but then also making EDM compatible so you can bootstrap the ecosystem and grow it really fast. So what is the current status of the Modan network? So the time of recording this video is not even live yet. And I think that's one of the reasons that not a lot of people are talking about this is because it hasn't technically gone to market yet, but the status is that the test network should be going live in a few months. Now, why is that important? Well, there's usually opportunities on test networks to get in early. We saw that with stuff like Aptos, where they had an incentivized test net with lots of airdrops. So with that being said, let's talk about some of the opportunities associated with this. So number one is definitely some airdrop potential. If it's got a new alternative layer one blockchain, it's probably going to have its own native gas token or new cryptocurrency that people want to get their hands on. And they're probably going to airdrop this cryptocurrency that's what lots of other people are doing these days, okay? Again, I don't have any clear insight into this. I'm just kind of connecting the dots and saying what I think will happen. And the Aptos airdrop with the incentivized test network, lots of people made thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars just from doing this. So there's probably some similar types of potential with the Monad blockchain. Other opportunities would be, you know, to run validators in this space to basically participate in running the blockchain itself and then running the computers for that and then earning passive income that way. You know, there's always gonna be opportunities for new tokens, whether that's the layer one gas token to, you know, potentially buy it and watch it appreciate in value over time. Again, not financial advice. I'm telling you to do that or any new tokens that might launch on top of the protocol. But if you're a developer, there's also some unique opportunities for you. Okay. So there is a Monad developer program that you can apply for with funding amounts anywhere between $5,000 and $100,000. So this could be a way for you to create a project and kind of create your own job for a time where you can build something useful to help get the ecosystem going. And on top of that, you know, this project is hiring. So there's lots of open roles. If you're trying to become a developer in the ecosystem, there's engineering roles and research roles. All right. So that's an overview of this technology and why it could be a big deal and why I could get some traction. So while I do think this idea will likely get traction as this launches and, you know, if we go into, you know, new crypto bull phase anytime soon, let me give you my, you know, personal, just unfiltered, unbiased thoughts about this as a technology itself. So as a technology, you know, stands, again, this is not the first time we've seen somebody come out with the idea of parallel execution of the blockchain. And I'm sort of of the stance that this still really has to be proven out as an effective way to process blockchain transactions, okay? In terms of like sequential processing, you know, that's a feature, not a bug in blockchains, for example, because you start to introduce potential problems into the system where like, what happens if you want to do a DEX trade and everybody's trying to do the DEX trade at the same time and they're trying to figure out what's the underlying liquidity for that trade and the price? 
Well, what happens if everybody's trying to get that same price? And then how does the network know how to put those transactions into the right order where you actually get the price that you think you're going to? I've seen different solutions for this type of thing, but not one that I'm still 100% convinced on yet. So I'm not saying there isn't a solution, but until I see a really compelling one, this still has to be proven out as an effective way to scale. And another reason I see sequential transactions as a feature, not a bug, is to solve the problem of state bloat. So basically that means that if you just include an insane number of transactions in the blockchain right now, the blockchain itself gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's a reason we don't do that, okay? So Ethereum right now could just go into the code and you know create a new release that says like, hey, let's just up the block limit like crazy and just start offering you know space for all these transactions to come in. We can make it faster. But the problem is you'd have a blockchain that's really unwieldy and it gets harder and harder and harder to run a node in that case which basically means that a lot of people running the network drop off and don't support it. And so that's a centralization risk, meaning you have to have a lot of hardware and a lot of space to order to run that network. And it starts to compromise on the decentralization in this case. And I don't think that this potential solution is immune from that. So that being said, you know, I'm still laser focused on the Ethereum ecosystem and scaling with layer two scaling solutions as a long-term strategy. But I still expect something like this to get some traction because people are always hungry to try the new next thing, especially if we enter into a new bull phase. So that being said, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you excited about this? Do you think that parallel execution has a place in blockchain? Do you think it's the key to scaling this stuff so that we can actually reach mass adoption and get blockchain ready for prime time? I want to hear from you down in the comment section below. So after you leave your comment, you know, make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.